Welcome to the Swike Podcast, the only podcast that shares the stuff you didn't know you needed to know about jobs, careers, and life. The Swike Podcast, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier podcast. We're here again with our guest host, uh, Minty, uh, and, and today we thought we'd get into a little bit on, on exercise. Uh, so we did one on physical fitness, and we want to do a little bit more of a, a deep dive on that. So uh, for me, if, if I can start with my background, um, I was kind of a scrawny kid, right? And uh, I was, what was it, like 120 pounds soaking wet type of thing, where I, I just couldn't gain weight. Uh, I had to take like those, those whey protein um, powders, and, and I, I built a little bit of muscle, but not a lot. But uh, yeah, I, I couldn't uh, really, really gain more. Um, and, and I stopped using that because, I don't know, it, it caused more digestive challenges <laughs> than others. So I got maybe through a quarter or a third of it. Uh, but so far, I said, nah, I, I don't want to deal with this. Uh, and, and I was pretty good. I never had to really do much exercise. I was good in, in, in I guess, gym, athletics and stuff. But around uh, 25, <laughs> right? Quite between 25 and 30 is when my, my physical health started kind of deteriorating, deteriorating a little bit where uh, like after uh, a, a session of playing volleyball or whatever, it's like I'd, I'd be tired and the next day I'd be sore and I'd be like, well, what is this? This is new. <laughs> I never had to do this before. And I had to stretch and, and, and all that sort of stuff. And then, yeah, and I got a little bit more sedentary, got into work, it's behind a desk and all that sort of stuff. And uh, apparently I got into my, my peak weight around my wedding, which wasn't a really good thing. And, and it kind of hit me when the photographer said, uh, can you like stretch your neck out? Because you have a bit of a double chin. Because I was sitting there kind of like this. So that's not a great feeling, but that's kind of um, my journey. And then, and then a bit later, I started getting a little bit, uh, or more recently, I've, I've started getting really uh, good with with my physical fitness. Yeah, and I'll share a little bit about that. But uh, Minty, what about you? What what are some of your I think because I know you started off uh, fairly healthy, and then obviously you're you're doing stuff with good life. But what are kind of the stories about yourself uh, in between? So my story is kind of long, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, yeah, growing up, I was really active. Like my dad really ingrained it into me how important like fitness and being active was. So I was like obsessed with gym. I was obsessed with um, playing sports. And um, even though I was really like active, I was still a little chubby. Like I wasn't okay. overweight or anything, but I was still a little, little chubby. And oh, a lot that, of my was friends. Muscle or was that uh, like just? chubbiness like I'm like, not sure it was like I, I still had like a belly like the rest okay. of me was kind of toned but like I still had like a belly okay um and a lot of the people around me were really skinny so that kind of became an insecurity for me mm. so I don't know why or when I made this decision but like one day I just decided not to eat okay and yeah it wasn't it wasn't a good decision but um I was eating like four Cheerios for breakfast um, like literally four of the little circles yeah like four of the little circles with some oh, milk okay. yeah for breakfast and then my mom would cook me like a really amazing healthy like brown bagged lunch and I would just go to school and throw it out like every day oh, oh, no. yeah it was really bad um and then I did it so often that like I think around like a few weeks I started to get used to like not eating so the only meal I was eating was dinner mm. and kind of when I started when I continued to do that uh, I started noticing like in grade eight prom, I noticed like I wasn't looking like myself. Like I looked at the pictures and I just looked really skinny. Um, I just looked terrible. Like there was no like meat on my neck. Like you could really see the bones. Mm -hmm. And I just felt horrible. Like I just didn't look like look, look myself. And then I think around, uh, I think around going to high school, I started to like, well, in my high school, I was uh there was like so much fast food places around my high school. So like right. I was eating there a lot and um, I started to gain weight and I also started to um, become less active. And um, yeah, so during this time, I kind of like started to gain weight a lot. Um, by the end of high school, I think I weighed like 140 pounds, mm -hmm. but like, I feel like at the time it was like, I felt like I was overweight, but like, honestly, I think that's a okay, like BMI for my height. Hmm. so yeah but at the time I just I thought I was overweight so I ended up signing up the gym and I did a lot of research on like what I like what would work best and like how to lose weight so like when I went to the gym I created my own my own workout routine hmm. and I was working out like three days a week and then gradually it became five days a week and then um I actually started to become more confident in myself and I started to feel good about myself but like 
the number on the scale was still the same. Hmm. So every time I went on the scale, the number didn't really go any lower. So I did more research and I realized that I wasn't eating healthy and I wasn't incorporating as much cardio. Like I was only doing 10 minutes of cardio. I was more, more focused on like strength training. Cause I just, I just loved going to the gym and working out like different muscles. I wasn't really into cardio. I actually hated cardio. I hated walking and doing like, um, going on the treadmill and stuff like that. So I finally started to, um, kind of work out more and start to lose weight. My family actually noticed that I was um become my arms were becoming toned and like my, my legs were becoming toned. Mm -hmm. But then um fast forward to like university, the end of first year, um I actually got put onto academic probation. Ooh. So yeah, then that caused like a lot of stress and like depression and like anxiety for me. So on top of that, I gained like 20 more pounds because I wasn't really going to the gym anymore. I was kind of just like in red and just like depressed and sad. And then I kind of like one day I just thought to myself, I was like, I need to get out of this. So I kind of remembered how happy the gym made me feel like after working out. And I kind of forced myself to, to go to the gym. It was really tough because I just wanted to stay in bed. But like once I stepped into the gym and like got into that gym atmosphere, like there's something about like seeing other people working out that makes me feel like really motivated and inspired. So I, I did my thing in the gym and then I just continued to go back and work out. And then I just started to feel good about myself and I started to kind of look like myself again. Hmm. And then I believe, so I got into second year, I think I was around 20 years old. And in Canada, like the legal drinking age is like 19. Right. So like around this time is when I got into like the whole party scene and then the clubbing scene. And I was like, yep. I was drinking a lot and stuff. And, um, and yeah, that all caught up to me. And I was like having like, uh, I had like a few hangovers and stuff. And obviously you don't want to go to the gym when you're having a hangover. No. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I started to gain weight again and I started to feel bad about myself. And so I believe like around like my last year of um, university, I decided to, I decided I wanted to change my life. I wanted to um, stop partying. I didn't want to do that anymore. I got older and I kind of got over that whole party scene. And I really wanted to just change my life and better myself. So I started to work out in the gym again. I started to do some more research and that's kind of where I'm at now. So I just started to um, drink at least eight cups of water. I tried to um, do more cardio in terms of like bike riding, going for walks mm -hmm. and do more strength training and just really and really focus on my sleep, like getting seven hours of sleep. Okay. And also like COVID has made it easy for me to become more active now. And I've really I've, I've found it really motivating to want to be active now. It's amazing. So it sounds a, a bit like a yo-yo <laughs> kind yeah. of going up and down, up and down now. So we're yeah. at the, the, the up peak and uh, hopefully there's going to be a, a nice slide down uh, mm -hmm. later on where uh, for, for folks that uh, are, are on YouTube, you can follow uh, Minty and, and, and her journey as well, where she's uh, going to be uh, kind of documenting her process and hopefully inspiring a few people along the way. Uh, but tell us a little bit about some of the things that, that have started working for you on, in this iteration, because obviously there's different things that work <laughs> at different points of it. Uh, yeah. But, but what, what's been working for you now and, and, and what's kind of the, the plan? And I don't know if there's an exercise uh, regime that you're uh, going to focus on and then mm -hmm. the nutritional and then you talk about sleep uh, as well. So, yeah. so talk about uh, what's going to be the uh, exercise uh, pass uh, for the next little while. So right now I'm just, um, I'm doing more cardio. I'm focusing on walking. Cause I feel like I really want to show people that like walking is actually really beneficial. Like it can help you lose weight. You can lose a lot of calories from just walking. And I want to kind of show people that like you can do low impact exercises and it can really help you like lose weight. So um, yeah, doing cardio and walking has worked for me. I'm going to start bike riding since the weather is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um for me, I like to, I still like to do strength training. Obviously it's kind of hard with the gyms being cold, um, closed, but um, I like to do like a lot of like resistance band exercises. A lot of body weight exercises have helped me a lot. And just like trying to focus on my nutrition. So like for my weight loss journey, every week I'm doing like a different challenge. So right now I'm doing a walking challenge. Yeah. And I think for next week, I'm going to do like um, a challenge where I eat, I'm um, sorry, where I drink eight, at least eight cups of water. And then I'm going to keep like challenging myself each week and doing something different so I can inspire people. And yeah, I just, yeah, I'm really focused on my nutrition right now. Um, focusing on just eating like real foods and drinking eight cups of water and really sleeping for like at least seven, seven hours. Mm -hmm. And yeah. 
Yeah, I think w- what we're trying to do here is showcase kind of uh, everyday people, right? So we're yeah. not like fitness professionals or kind of the, the gurus or whatever, uh, but we've kind of gone through our own health journey. So, so, so for me, what I've started doing, uh, I guess, in the past uh, five or six years is uh, <laughs> after that photographer said that I should get rid of my double chin, uh, I, I started getting into kind of more just more body weight exercises. And what I found is actually it's the consistency, right? So I will do like push ups uh, pretty much every day. Uh, crunches and 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 squats and things like that and it might be a combination of 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 all three but maybe for only 10 minutes a day right but but I do that every day Uh, I'll try to do it um, during break so I've tried to every time I have a a finish a zoom meeting that sort of thing right I'll go off and 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 bang out whatever uh, 10 10 push-ups or 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 10 squats or or some crunches or something and that consistent movement over the day has has been uh, I think a a a bit of a, a game changer and then Obviously, it's the nutrition stuff because I think we talked before where you can't you can't outwork your mouth, right? So if you're bringing in uh, bad stuff there, then then it's it's not going to necessarily help. Um, but 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 it's interesting that you kind of focus more on kind of the low impact stuff because uh, the, the things that I've been doing have been a little bit more kind of shorter but higher bursts, right? So that like the Tabata, the 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 high intensity interval training, that sort of thing. Or uh, I've also started doing more um, like like time under tension right so a push-up that i'll do i'll actually take like 10 seconds i'll go one two three four mm-hmm. five and then one two so it actually take me a whole 10 seconds to do one push-up mm-hmm. and i find that uh, that that has been helping uh, me has that been helpful for you or you're just focused on all these different things and you're going to try all of them eventually yeah um <laughs> i've definitely done like um i've done hit i love hit workouts they really right. get you to sweat and they like um they get you to like lose a lot of calories in such a small amount of time so i think those are really beneficial i think for right now i'm just gradually getting to that to that point i'm just starting kind of on low impact exercises and then i'll start doing like more hit and tabata workouts and, and tell me a little bit about that, like kind of the mindset, right? Because you mentioned a little bit uh, during various phases, you had a little bit of that kind of kind of the depression and, and, and not feeling well. But for, for those that are kind of uh, trying to get started on this journey, because I think sometimes it's that that first step or that first thing that whatever it is, that's the, the most difficult. What was that for you in, in this go around that that is starting to kind of help you build momentum? I think um, something that's really helped me is just really kind of thinking about why you're doing this, like thinking about what is your end goal? I think um, that could really motivate you to actually put in the work and actually kind of lose weight or whatever it is you're trying to do. Just like kind of reminding yourself and motivating yourself each time you do it. Cause like at times, yeah, I do become like, I do become like lazy. I don't want to do anything or whatever, but like, honestly, starting this weight loss journey and seeing like getting all the support I'm getting and seeing people kind of actually being inspired with my journey, like actually is motivating me to be more consistent. Cause I think um, a lot of the times I've struggled with consistency, but this has actually made me consistent because it's also keeping me accountable. Yeah, I think that that's amazing. So um, I, I'm reminded of, uh, there's an author Gretchen Rubin, which she actually has this method uh, or this framework called the, the four tendencies. Mm-hmm. Basically say that people uh, tend, to, tend to do things based on either inner or outer accountability, right? So. Um, the, the four tendencies are there, there's these uh, upholders that basically it doesn't matter if it's in an inner or outer um, uh, ex- expectation, they can do it, right? The opposite is uh, the rebel who can't do either, right? <laughs> and apparently those two are very small portions of the population, like whatever, less than 10, less than 5% of the population. The two big ones are what's called uh, questioners or obligers, right? So a questioner basically can do stuff if they understand the reason why. So I think you, you hit the nail on the head where th- there's a motivation where I wanna be healthy, I wanna be an inspiration to others, I want to, whatever it is. Uh, and, and then the second part is, um, it, they're called obligers, where they, they don't, it, the reason actually doesn't mad, matter, but if they have someone that that's holding them accountable to it, they don't want to let that person down. So mm-hmm. it's actually great that you're doing kind of both <laughs> where, yeah. where you have a bit of a why and you also have uh, s- someone to hold you accountable. So mm-hmm. for those that are uh, kind of considering one or the other, think about either your why. And if that's not doing it for you, then uh, share it with the world. Or, so maybe join uh, Minty on her uh, challenge too and kind of share y- your journey and, and see if uh, you, could, you can kind of uh, move forward together. So um 
Yeah, I think that, that that's amazing. So, so what are some of the the challenges that we can uh, look forward to? So we have kind of the walking, you said, um, and then 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 water hydration is definitely important. Yes. Are there other ones that you're considering uh, for the future as well? Uh, things that people might want to do from an exercise perspective. Um, so another thing I'm going to try to do is like another nutrition one, which is going to be very hard for me. It's like um, going. It's like seven days without sugar. That's going to be really tough for me because okay. I'm definitely like a, a sweet lover. So yeah. Um, and then for exercise, I think I'm going to start like doing like um, a week where I try to get like 10,000 steps for the mm-hmm. week. And then um, I think I might do like ones where I'm just like working out for the whole week and doing yoga for the whole week. So those are some of the challenges that you can expect. And I'm also going to do one where I, I could do, um, I'm just going to be vegan for the week. Okay. Yeah. I'm wondering if you can, uh, or if you'd be interested in putting one where, um, instead of like the 10,000 steps, it's more like the moving around every hour. Right. Cause it's uh, sometimes I find that, uh, people will like, yeah, take that, that, uh, what 5k, 10k walk, uh, but then just sit down for the entire day, <laughs> rest of the day, which I don't know if it's that, that great. Um, mm-hmm. which, uh, I don't know. I haven't seen that the research to say t- too much otherwise, but I've heard that uh, adding more movement into the, the day is is, um, is oftentimes better than, than kind of those, those individual bursts. Mm-hmm. But I haven't necessarily seen the, the comparison studies or whatever. So just something to, to consider. And the on the nutrition side, one one thing that I've heard is uh, it's really the concentrated foods that you eat. And what I mean mm-hmm. by that is is sugar really is some sort of uh, fruit like sugar cane or, or, or sugar beets or whatever that has been concentrated into like the crystal form, right? Yeah. So that's why it's not good. So sugar is actually not bad, uh, mm-hmm. but the concentrated form is, is not. And, and things like, like wheat uh, and, and bread, like wheat's not bad, but the mm-hmm. concentrated form where now you get bread and noodles and stuff like that, those aren't good for you. But mm-hmm. the oats and, and whole grains and stuff on their own are actually quite uh, relatively good for you, right? So mm-hmm. um, j- just being more, more mindful about eating on that. But yeah, that sugar one, I, I don't know if I'd be able to do that, but maybe I'll, I'll, maybe, maybe I'll join you because if it's, if it's one where uh, you're doing the challenge, right? It's a challenge, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and, and and the goal is is not to like completely abandon it, but maybe mm-hmm. uh, afterwards there's there's one day a week and then two days a week and then three mm-hmm. days a week where you don't need it as much. So uh, yeah, let me know when you get on that and maybe I'll I'll join you uh, for that as well. So um, from from your uh, I guess dealings or, or your, your travels at at, at Good Life, uh, mm-hmm. what have you found uh, from from other people that that have kind of uh, gone in there what have, what has been helpful or, or useful for them just to kind of give it more of a breadth or, or, or other things that people can take a look at oh yeah so um so I'm kind of friends with some of the personal trainers so I actually worked out with one of my personal trainers and like he's been saying like um that hit workouts can really be beneficial for people like anything mm-hmm. like from just going on a stationary bike and just doing like um kind of hit workouts so like going as fast as you can for a minute and then taking a break for like another minute and then going as fast as you can for the next minute I think those can be very beneficial um for a lot of people I think it's just like doing cardio but like doing like interval training I think that's really helpful um I don't think it's uh, the best thing to do like a lot of cardio, like don't do like hours of cardio, but like, I think like doing like at least 30 minutes of cardio and then pairing that with like strength training exercises can be very beneficial to anyone who's like just trying to be fit and just trying to, trying to lose weight. I think that's very beneficial. Yeah. I think the best advice that I got from someone is the best exercise that you can, uh, the best exercise is the one that you do. Yes. <laughs> it actually doesn't matter what it is as mm-hmm. long as you're moving as long as you're doing it so it could be a walk it could be uh hit training it could mm-hmm. be swimming it could be biking it could be uh like a sport or whatever as long yeah. as you're doing it mm-hmm. then uh that, that's kind of the, the, the best exercise and obviously if you can do it a little bit more and a little bit higher quality and all that sort of stuff then it would be good so uh what are some other aspects of, of exercise that you might want to share with our with our listeners Um, I want to just second that, like, I think consistency is really key, like being consistent. I think that's the toughest part about like any, any goal you have, like being, um, like losing weight or gaining, gaining weight, or just like being fit. Consistency is like the most important thing. So just like being able to just exercise today and then come back tomorrow and then continue that. Um, it's also really beneficial to take rest days. 
Like mm-hmm. really listen to your body and just take those rest days when you need it. Cause, and it's okay. Like as long as you get back to it the next day, it's okay to take rest days. And, and yeah, I think, um, I think walking is really important. I think finding what is a, like what activity you enjoy and just doing that consistency. It could be like skipping rope. It could be just walking. It could be bike riding. It could be anything. Right. Just like find something that you enjoy and then just continue to be consistent with it and just continue to um, really focus on your goal. Yeah, and I think uh, what we said about kind of that accountability where if you can mm-hmm. find a, a workout buddy, gym buddy, or just an exercise partner, someone who likes to walk or skip or whatever it is that you like yeah. to do, uh, then that helps uh, a lot. And, and especially on those days where you don't want to go out, mm-hmm. then to have know that, oh, I don't want to let uh, Minty down because we were supposed to go for a bike ride this afternoon uh, versus now I'm vegging on the couch, right? Okay, mm-hmm. I... I, I pick myself up because I want to make sure that uh, you do that too. And and the funny thing is you're probably in the same boat where like, oh, I don't want to let Lukey down because we've made a commitment. And by doing that together, then, then you're more kind of the, the sum of your part. So I think that's all, all great and useful advice. And uh, going back to uh, whatever it is, just do something and uh, see, see what works and, and try a little bit more, reach out to friends and, and, and um, family and build that support structure and uh, have fun. So uh, yeah, hopefully folks will will follow you on on your uh, health journey and uh, give give us some feedback on uh, what it is that has worked with them and and worked for them. And uh, yeah, we'll hopefully we'll have you back for a future episode. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. If you like the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. And if you can give us a review, that would be very appreciated. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn at Luki Danu, L-U-K-I-D-A-N-U, and the same on most social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.